Good morning, everyone. I'm seated, seated here in the morning. Seated. <laughs> I haven't finished my coffee yet. I'm seated here early in the morning. You can't see them. I don't think I can get it up where you can see them. Uh, nope. There are geese all along the bank down here, the ones I've been showing you pictures of. They're just right down below. And their little ones with them, they're all eating. So today I want to talk about it is easy to see how we can be deceived and, and misled even by people that have good intentions not realizing what's really happening. We are fighting a spiritual war. That's why in Ephesians 6 we have the armor of God. All the pieces in there have to do with the tools that we need to fight a spiritual war, not a physical war. But you look at what we have today with all of our movies, uh, the ones of recent are failing because they've taken on a woke position, but prior to that, I'm a big fan of the superhero genre that we, we have out there. And I may have started with Superman uh, with DC, but I follow the other side a little bit. Uh, Marvel, and I've been in a number of Marvel films, including Endgame, where I have screen time. I like the idea of having somebody, a, a physical superhero who can help save the day. But we're really not in that position, are we? Now, a lot of these superheroes were created during wartime. Uh, the comic books were the way to do this to reach the kids, not the adults. Now, adults read comic books today. But it was not considered a good form of writing. <clears throat> Stan Lee is not his real name. I don't remember his real name exactly, but it's like Stanley Lewinsky or something. It's, it's a Jewish name, and they were all hiding, the, you know, Hollywood and all the rest were all hiding their Jewish names because there was anti-Semitism even back then. Maybe not as bad as it is now worldwide, but it's always been bad in certain parts. So we have our superheroes. I was at a uh, gathering one time. I've, I've been with Stan Lee a number of times because he would travel and do the conventions. And somebody asked him what was his inspiration for all of his amazing characters. And he would tell him, well, my wife and daughter. And they go, great, they're into this stuff too? And he goes, no, we had to eat. So the intent was not to influence you that much. It was to have a comic book come out that you would buy and they would continue to make money. That's all it was. It was for entertainment purposes only. But yet if you look at them, I mean, you know, World War II, you know, it appeared that it was a physical war. A lot of people died during this physical war. We just had Memorial Day to remember them. But it was a spiritual war too. Look at Hitler killing the Jews. Couldn't be more anti-Israel, anti-God than that. And there were also Christians killed. Seven million Jews were killed, but they killed seven million others. That included Christians, people of handicap, whatever the problem was. If you weren't perfect, you could get into that, that group. And if you look at the swastika, it's a broken cross. And he did, just like we see in... Uh, the Indiana Jones movie, 
he traveled around looking for relics. Now, he never got the Ark just because they took it away from him in the movie, he never found it. But he did find other things. And they looted a lot. They, Every time they went into a place, they went to the museums and, and looted. They became wealthy off of that stuff. But it's a physical war that we were fighting to stop a spiritual war. And it cost us a lot to do that. So you've got to be careful not to be drawn in to a physical war to fight a spiritual war. You fight a spiritual war with prayer, fasting, reading the Bible. You don't fight it. Because you will lose. Now, we won the greatest Christian nation in the world helped win the war. So we had developed the tools that we needed to win. Including the nuclear bomb. Everything in this world is what we choose to make it. Nuclear energy can be used to power power plants, or bombs. Iran is fighting a religious war physically. They want the elimination of the Jews. They're working on developing a nuclear bomb, multiple. If Japan had known that when we dropped our two nuclear bombs, we didn't have a third one, we had pieces that they could have put together into a third one, but that would have been it. We didn't have any more. They probably would not have surrendered. But the fear that we had more is what encouraged them to surrender. So Iran's going to have to make more than one. But all they want is to drop one in Israel. And they know the Dome of the Rock and the Nesca Mosques don't amount to anything, to Islam. It's all a lie to keep the Jews from being up there, to keep the Jews from making their, rebuilding their temple. They are completely afraid of the Jews getting back in their connection to God, their physical connection, having to have the temple and the ark and the sacrifices. Now we know it's not necessary anymore, but they don't. So they're going to go ahead and try to do that. The Antichrist is going to come on the scene and help them to do that. He's going to get the seven-year peace treaty signed. He's going to help them build a new temple. I don't know what they're going to do with the Dome of the Rock. It's technically a museum piece, if you will. It was a tourist destination, a tourist trap. Uh, years and years and years ago. There were even brochures come to the dome to see where the Jewish temple used to stand. It was a tourist trap. That's all it was. They made money off of it, getting inside and seeing that there were 12 pillars inside. And Muhammad never came to Jerusalem. It said he went west. There was no reason to go to Jerusalem when he went west. Because there was nothing there. The UNESCO mosque wasn't built until after he died. It wasn't converted into a mosque. It was office space. It was the supporting structures and buildings that were there for the temple. So it's all a lie. Satan's good at that. But he's got us fighting a physical war. Israel's going to find out eventually, because they haven't figured it out yet, that they don't need to be 
fighting a physical war. If they would return to God, God would deal with his enemies that are completely surrounding them. They're going to push, God is going to push Israel right to the brink. He's, they're going to have no friends in the neighborhood. Everyone's going to hate them. The whole world's going to be behind the inevitable attack. The other big superpower, Russia, is going to lead the attack in Ezekiel 38. And there's nobody going to help them. And they're going to be overwhelmed and they would be wiped off the face of the earth if God didn't interfere. But they won't learn that until it happens. Because they, even though they are the source of all the things that are happening, this, when we switch to the 70th week, the tribulation time frame, the focus is going to turn off of the world and the Gentiles back to the chosen. And they're still trying to defend themselves physically. There may be some small remnants in there that are trying to follow the old school Bible teachings. I keep forgetting to set up my other light. I mean, it looks fine normally, but if I bring up something white, the camera follows it. Especially if I bring it up to my face. So the bottom line is whether we're looking at a world that's being convinced to fight a physical war, Israel itself is trying to fight a physical war. They're still in Rafa. They're, they're continuing. They're ignoring the United States. They're ignoring everybody else. They're doing what they need to do, and that's protect themselves. That's fine, up to a point. But because they're not carrying it to God properly. I mean, they've never thought, after the 67 war, they had control of the Temple Mount. But because they had no plans of ever rebuilding the temple, no plans of ever trying to reconnect to God that way. They let Jordan take over and be in charge of it. They put their police force in there to keep the peace. But for a long time, the Jews weren't even allowed to go up there and pray. That is that is not the way you want to deal with God. But they, most Jews are atheists. They go, we're here, we're supposed to be the chosen people, and yet we've suffered all this stuff. How can there be a God? Because they haven't trusted God properly. They haven't prayed to God properly. And they haven't sacrificed to God properly. They've either got to perfectly follow their Old Testament sacrifices, or they've got to follow Jesus. You only get two choices. Now, they're still going to be prosperous because God promised that they would, promised to Abraham that they would be prosperous and do well in this world. But he, that same promise goes to the Jew, Jews and the Muslims or the Arabs because they're all related. <clears throat> That's why the Arabs have all this oil and they can continue on this fight because they're being prosperous. But it all comes from God and his promise. But after watching for 2,000 years, the Christians, <clears throat> we apparently haven't done a good enough job representing God because it, it hasn't convinced the world. They see us fighting amongst ourselves. They see us not doing a good job as Christians. They see us fighting. 
the divorce rate among Christians is probably better than the world, but it's still there. <clears throat> so our time is up. The 2,000 years is essentially up. We're just waiting. We're not sitting around doing nothing. We're still working. We're still trying to reach the world, but our time is basically up. So Satan's got his time coming, and he's preparing for it. And he's preparing for it for a physical fight, because he's got the world to believe that that's what this is about. It's not a spiritual war, it's a physical war. Eliminate Christians and Jews, and the world will be a better place. In parts of the world, they kill Christians and Jews. We've been pretty immune to a lot of this stuff here in the United States. But there's still riots going on in colleges, and these are paid thugs. Some countries are handling it properly, some are not. You can tell who's bought into the narrative. Spain has just agreed to recognize Palestine. It never has been, never will be a state, yet they bought into the lie. You're going to recognize something that doesn't exist. There are other countries that are deporting. Some of the students that were involved in the riots are being deported. They're no longer being allowed to go to school. That's the way it should be. But they don't have... The majority of the world is allowing these, especially the United States, which ought to tell you something. They've achieved what they needed to achieve. They don't need to send kids to these indoctrination centers anymore, the colleges, because the colleges are getting bad names now, but they don't care. They've achieved what they needed. They've convinced and taught these kids to hate the government, hate America, hate Jews, and hate Christians. They're not worried about who's going to be the next president. <clears throat> That's another scary thought. You see, we can't handle four more years of, of the big B. He hasn't been president this term. So it doesn't matter if they can keep him breathing Weekend at Biden's, or weekend at Bernie's, however you want to do it. He's a puppet. It doesn't matter who's, who's there, and it doesn't matter if he stays there. He's not running things. But it's, it's fixing to get down. The stuff that we've, we read recently in Revelation, of all the bad stuff, the stuff that bothered me to even teach it is coming and the world is going to walk right into it arms out and embrace it until they realize what they've done and then it's too late once you're over the cliff and falling there's a moment of peace as you look down and you see the earth getting closer and closer and then splat you pay for your decision but there is a moment of peace during that could be a moment of panic but God is still going to go out of his way which as I tell everyone it's a figure of speech because he's omnipresent he doesn't have to go anywhere but he goes out of his way to teach the world, you've got one last chance, and I'm giving it to you now. Listen to me. Follow my son. We're fighting a spiritual war, and Satan right now, at least in the world, appears to be winning. You say, well, how could he, how could he win over God? Well, God allows him to win. Satan couldn't win anything if God didn't allow it. But Satan has no limit to his tactics. God does. 
<clears throat> Christians have limits to what they will do. Satan has no limits. He'll do anything. He doesn't care. Life down here, he knows life doesn't matter down here. This is not our home. He knows that. He doesn't live here himself. He lives in heaven. I look forward to the time where he gets kicked out. So don't, don't get caught up in the hype. Fight this war the way we know how to fight as Christians. And that can include Jews. There are Jewish Christians out there, and there will be plenty when we get the 144,000. There will be plenty. And they will know, they will recognize the Antichrist at, at some point and realize their mistake. And then we will get our last group of Christians. Christians is, a, is a, a term, believers in Jesus Christ, or in Yeshua. Words have, words have meanings and consequences. That's why we're messing with pronouns. And in women, too. God created Adam, then Eve. after he created the heavens and the earth, and then he rested. He was done. He didn't keep making variations. <clears throat> but that's the, the lie, the narrative. Anything to divide. Divide and conquer. One of Satan's best tactics. All right. Enjoy this peaceful serenity that we have. We had some storms over the weekend. There's still damage from these storms. And they're saying we're going to have a really bad hurricane season. <clears throat> we don't control this environment. We can't control it. We can't even fully predict it. Be fighting your spiritual war daily by praying daily reading the Bible daily and trying to be as sin-free as the Spirit will help you to be. We can't be perfect. We will never be sin-free sin -free until we stand before Jesus. But down here, the more you can be as sin-free as possible, the more power you can have to release from God. We can quench the Spirit. We can grieve the Spirit, and the Spirit has trouble working in us. But if you can be as sin-free as possible, and that takes work sometimes. Some of us, we just can't seem to stop repeating sins. We have a nature, and we've grown up in a world that's very physical, very emotional, and the heart is wicked. So we have to be careful. We have to support what we're doing. But we have to keep that spiritual side as clean as possible to do the work of the Lord. All right. This peace behind me is not what's going on in the world. There's still a couple of wars going on. But we have wars and rumors of wars, so nothing new. I just read from Ecclesiastics, there's nothing new under the sun. It's all vanity without God. The wisest man in the world is giving us that. If you don't have God in your life, then everything you're doing is for nothing. When the Titanic sank, it took very rich people millionaires. They died. Their money couldn't save them. And we've had millionaires die 
No. Steve Jobs died at, what, 56? <clears throat> I know, I'm a geek. Pancreatic cancer, I think. You can't... You can't affect this world like you think you can. And money is not going to buy you out of here. Especially when our money goes to zero, which is getting ready to happen. Put your investments in heaven and not on earth, because we're going to go. We're going to go check our money in heaven here soon. Till we meet in the clouds. God bless. They've been mowing the grass, so now they're going to come up here and eat off of it. There's some out in the water coming in, down on the water's edge. All the baby geese. There's some way out there on the lake coming in. The dinner bell's been ringing.